So I want to talk about education, and I want to talk about creativity. My contention is that creativity now is as important in education as literacy, and we should treat it with the same status. Our education system is predicated on the idea of academic ability, and there's a reason. The whole system was invented around the world. There were no public systems of education really before the 19th century. They all came into being to meet the needs of industrialism. So the hierarchy is rooted on two ideas. Number one, that the, the most useful subjects for work are at the top. So you were probably steered benignly away from things at school when you were a kid, things you liked, on the grounds you would never get a job doing that. Is that right? Don't do music, you're not going to be a musician. Don't do art, you won't be an artist. Uh, benign advice. Now, profoundly mistaken. Under Bunrock Naharan, Article 42, the state aims to provide students with not just an academic education, but also a moral, intellectual and social education. This documentary seeks to discover whether the second level education system fulfills this criteria and whether students receive an adequate education to prepare them for third level, the workplace and life. Uh, to me, I think that the secondary education is still based around civil servants. And I think that it's just to teach them enough to go in and do a civil, a civil servant job, you know, and it's, just, it's been the same since my day, and that's a long time ago. And I, I, I think there's serious need for change. Like, in most secondary schools, it's seen as like, you're either book smart or you're good at sports, and if you're not really in those categories, you're not really seen as someone, like as somebody. But like, there's plenty of young, talented musicians out there and artists out there, and they're not being motivated and pushed like, to the next level to reach their potential. With more diverse job opportunities becoming available in today's society, more and more innovative subjects are being introduced into the curriculum. Despite this, there is still an emphasis placed on certain core subjects such as maths and the sciences. Why is this? Why are they promoted? Uh, maths in particular is promoted because overall there is a policy in government to promote what they call STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths. They tend to be lacking in our um, education system and then therefore people aren't going into connected jobs and that's where they claim jobs will be in the future in the area of science, engineering, maths and technology. So there's a push on them because they see there's a void in terms of employment down the line, people coming out with uh, other type of qualifications, um, finding then that maybe they're, they're in the job in that particular area where they need a push on the, the, the main STEM areas. We encourage students to do honours maths as much as we can because that is an area I think in Ireland that people tend to shy away from. Obviously it's very difficult but it is a huge bonus if one can do honours maths for the Leaving Cert. The sciences of course are pushed not because of any individual teacher or to get numbers up, but because obviously of opportunities after the Leaving Cert in science has been very big at the moment. From the point of view of jobs, it's the main thing, um, just to have science or a part of science, biology or chemistry or physics um, as part of your Leaving Cert is probably important going forward. But then again, it depends what field you want to get into. Again, they're anxious in terms of their son and daughter getting into the right subjects to allow them to pursue the right courses to get them a job. Okay, so they are thinking down the line in terms of career and employability. Will my son or daughter have to emigrate because there won't be a job for them? Or in secondary schools at the moment, if you're not academic, forget it. You know, I think. And I know there's other courses, let's say if you finish school and you wouldn't be academic, there's lots of PLC courses and stuff like that. But generally, if you spend five years in school, possibly six years in school, um, you'd hope that after that time, you'd have, you know, some kind of a result that you wouldn't have to, you know, if you're, if you're not academic, you'd think that you'd have some kind of a cert or some kind of result at the end of it, instead of going on again for maybe one or two years for, to do a PLC course, maybe if you're not academic, do you know. But there is the new um, curriculum coming out this September, or yeah, starting this September, and that's more C, um, CA based as well. The junior certificate is changing from a common set of national exams to an in-house model of continuous assessments. These are marked by students' own teachers in place of an anonymous examiner. 
This change is being made to facilitate all types of student learning and to prepare students for third level education. However, teachers are protesting these changes. You have to be very careful in making change because it's not just change for the sake of change. As much as we give out about our structures, they are very objective and from that point of view they're very fair. So if you start bringing in continual assessment, um, interviews and so on, um, there's an awful lot that can go wrong. We have to be very careful if we make those type of changes. But my biggest concern about the new junior cert, if it comes in uh, as soon as the minister thinks it might, is how effective will it be as a building block for Leaving Cert? Um, I think there had to be some changes made also at Leaving Cert if we're going to relying on the junior cert for the foundation stone. Well, the new junior cert is a little bit of a bone of contention. Um, uh, only a couple of days ago, the ASTI members balloted against um, bringing this in. We feel that if it is brought in, it will take away the objectivity of the exam. As it is at the minute, um, when people mark the junior cert paper, nobody knows who they are. And they're trying to bring in this um, approach that the teachers will mark their own students' papers. They're trying to say it's not a cutback, but surely it is when there will be nobody then getting paid to correct the junior cert papers. Assessing our own students for a certificate exam we feel it's not fair because uh, parents sometimes, you know, even students sometimes think teachers are favourites and you've been marked and they feel they got that mark because they're a teacher's pet or something like that. Which may not be true, you know, and there's all those type of issues. If you know someone very well or know their parents and know this, you, are you going to add another few points to, you know, their exams and things yeah. like that, you know, so I, I suppose it could, go, it could go both ways, really. I think it's too much work for them. I don't think the teachers, there's enough hours in the day for them to do it, because at the moment there's no continuous assessment and, you know, they get, get exams, they're trying to mark it, you're trying to teach, you're, kind, you're trying to, um, I suppose, prepare the work for each coming day as a teacher and now they have to look at each individual child how are they getting on, how, you know, depending on what subject or what way they're being assessed um, there's going to be a lot more paperwork. I don't think I think they need more manpower if they're going to do it. Yeah. I know it's starting Continue. the year after I go into junior cert, so I'm the last getting the old one or something. So, yeah. But like they're not going to have like all the exam papers and everything to work on. You know, it's going to be totally different, and they're probably going to get lower and everything because they don't know the marking schemes, you know, properly and everything. Like in a sense, I I I spent two years in the RTC. It was the RTC then in Tralee, and. I was amazed to find a continuous assessment. I never even knew what continuous assessment was. But that's what they should be using. They should be using an assessment where they're assessing pu pupils as they go along, not a final day exam. I think a final day exam puts too much stress on people. Just the academic stress that they put on themselves alone without the teacher even putting the stress on them. Some, I suppose, um, are, are that, have that type of personality that they get more stressed. The other um, part of it, the other advantage, I suppose, of changing it is that there would be more project-based assessments, that it wouldn't be a case of learning everything off by heart, which is the case at the minute. Um, but unless they change the Leaving Cert cycle, I can't see how changing the Junior Cert cycle will benefit them in the long run. If they have to then go from doing projects and continual assessment back into fifth year to face the um, traditional Leaving Cert course. So I think there has to be a change all the way up or not at all. Well, you see, teachers are, like everybody in this life, are afraid of change, mm -hmm. you know, and they are going to be against this type of change because it's going to make their job harder. And I, th that's the only thing that I see they're, go they're going to be against it for. We have to change. And yes, you are, th some, some of the changes are not going to be good, but you, 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 you keep changing until you find the right, the right one. And that's the only way I look at it. With an emphasis being placed on what are known as the STEM subjects, are alternatives being offered to better students' social and moral education? We have too many to mention. Um, the old reliables of football and hurling and rugby. Um, we have a fantastic sports at dawn um, club that Mr McMahon set up where a lot of the boys come in at half eight in the morning and they have a, um, a plethora of um, sport activities to choose from. Um, that happens in the morning. Um, we also introduced this year the Classroom to 5K, um, where we brought a number of first years out to our field there, the Harriers, 
and they trained up to doing 5k. I think the running is very important for students who wouldn't make a football team or don't make the basketball team or can't really get on um, a team sport. Um, I find that a lot of them have come to the running world because it's individual. Even though we run in a group, anyone can do it. You don't have to have A, B and C of a criteria to start it. So it has worked wonders for quieter um, boys who would maybe suffer with their confidence. To do soccer, to do Gaelic football, to do swimming, to do horse riding, the basketball would be a big sport, especially with the girls. And uh, they, have a, uh, they have a very wide variety of sports, so they can choose whatever they want to do. You, you get a sense of belonging, you get a sense of what is local workers team, you go off, you meet other schools, all of that. You get talking to new people, um, and it gives you, you know, an idea of what it's like just beyond the English and the Irish and, and the French you ever read your in school. Yeah, we have the baiting, we have all the sports, we have in TY, we have a big spectrum again from the YSI to COSI, uh, to knitting, we had knitting at one year, I don't know what the knitting on this year, but you know, things like that, that wouldn't be, I suppose, maybe the norm in, in, in every school. Um, the science club, um, the cross country. That's what you're signed up to? Yeah. That's what you signed up to? Um, the basketball, the football and the soccer. Instead of like, kind of relaxing, they kind of have, they're, they're doing more stuff and it just does, it just keeps them busy. Art. And, uh, That's about it. Yeah. Religion, though, is sometimes kind of creative. How is religion creative? Because, like, you get to do... Oh, no, and SPHE, because SPHE is kind of like a break class as well. Are these opportunities, in addition to an academic education, enough to prepare students for life? Oh, absolutely not. No, it definitely does. We have a great... We have a long tradition here in Ireland of... You know, we're renowned worldwide for having uh, a very good education. And I think, um, you know, we, it does prepare them for, for life. They get a very rounded education. I, I know, like, you can't ever reach a point where you say, we've everything done. This person is fully equipped to meet whatever ever life is going to land on them. Because I think nobody's ever at that stage. I think from the second that a child goes to primary school all the way up to the end of secondary school, they, it's a huge learning curve. Um, a lot of boys and girls throughout the country have hard times at school but I think that can only uh, work towards strengthening their personality. Um, nobody sails through life, nobody has, nobody has a school experience, I'm sure, without a few minuses along the way, but I think it definitely, through the academic side and through meeting all different personalities, and of course the sporting side, I think they leave here with, with a very well-rounded personality. Uh, a little bit only. No. <laughs> It's not though, like, because it doesn't really offer you like some of the stuff you want to do. Do you know? It just offers you the stuff that are the most common stuff that are, do you know, get you money and stuff. Like, they like it's saying it's preparing you like for what's out there and what you're going to deal with in later life. But for five years I've spent in like secondary school, I haven't learned an awful lot about what's out there. Like, just I think it's just it's both the school and the parents. I think if you just send your school your kids off to school it's not going to work. I don't think just school prepares them for, for um, everyday life. We have to be careful now that we avert some of the scenarios that we've talked about and the only way we'll do it is by seeing our creative capacities for the richness they are and seeing our children for the hope that they are. And our task is to educate their whole being so they can face this future. By the way, we may not see this future but they will, and our job is to help them make something of it. Thank you very much. <laughs>